Hi friends. So today's the day, the day that I swore would never come, the day that I'm going to talk about my biggest regret as an owner of a 1960s house who was also obsessed with vintage 50s, 60s, and 70s stuff that is like authentic vintage. I have a huge regret about this house that I swore I would never talk about. Years ago when I joined the vintage community, I made a little silent promise to myself that I should never ever talk about this because I think people would be very upset with me. And I want to tour this bathroom with you and I don't think I can give a real tour of this without explaining this big mistake that I made. And so obviously I regret it too. Um, so if you come with a torch and pitchfork for me, that's fine. But it is what it is and I want to be open about it. And I'm sick of feeling guilty about it. So we're just gonna talk about it. So I'm gonna give you a tour of my bathroom. I'm going to show you before pictures of the bathroom. I'm gonna talk about a huge regret, my huge mistake. And then I'm gonna talk about what I do love about this bathroom that I renovated. So without further ado, this is my bathroom. My house was built in the 1960s and I have kept so many things original in this house, even down to the paint colors. Almost all the paint colors in the house are the same. I didn't paint all the original 1960s woodwork. I mean like this door is still the same. I've kept like almost all the original light fixtures, like everything is the same. But the bathroom is a completely different story. So first I'm going to give you context about this bathroom because this story needs context so that hopefully you understand my perspective and the point of view that I was in. So when I bought this house, I was 22 years old and I didn't know anything. And okay, if you're 22, you do know things. But like looking back on myself now, I'm 30 now, I feel like I didn't know anything about owning a house and it was my very first time needing to renovate a space and I had to do it in a very short timeline because when I bought this house, this bathroom, didn't really have a working shower. I mean, it sort of did. So it was originally just a bathtub. And then I think the owners of this house, they were elderly. And so they got old enough that they weren't able to get into the bathtub. And so they installed this like handheld shower thing that's not like a normal shower. And the other thing is they did not have a tile surround with the bathtub. So it was just plaster walls. And so when I came in here, you could see like there was a bunch of water damage where the bathtub was and it was like cracking and it was all smushy and gross. So I knew that had to go and I didn't want to shower in here and make it all worse. So right away when I moved in here, I knew I had to get a plumber to give me a shower. And then also I wanted to get as much done as possible and I didn't have a dishwasher in my kitchen. And so I had the plumber install that as well at the same time to save money. The other big problem with this bathroom is there wasn't an exhaust fan and that is really important to keep moisture out of your bathroom like when you're taking a shower and thankfully um, I have a really cool guy that I know and he is a plumber and he, he runs a business that is plumbing and electrical and then he also does things like woodwork and cabinetry so they basically do everything and so I hired them for this and they did an amazing job. If you're local to the area I will link them below so that you can hire them if you want to. I do know them personally and they're awesome. All right I have done enough stalling so like I said, I have never had any renovation experience, never hired anybody to fix anything for me. I had to do this quickly. And so what I haven't mentioned so far is that there was a bathtub, but the bathtub and the toilet and the sink was a 1960s pink kitchen. So the bathtub was a cast iron 
pink bathtub, the toilet and the sink were pink. I know it is very sad. Maybe you, maybe you don't think this is very sad, but for people that really, really love original pink and blue and green vintage bathrooms, it is very sad to learn that that bathroom is now gone. If you are shocked that I got rid of an adorable pink tub, I understand why you're shocked, but I need you to put on glasses of understanding. And so this was my perspective. What I saw was a bathtub that didn't have a surround. So I saw a huge problem. I couldn't take a shower. I saw an inefficient toilet because it is very old and it also had really gross stains. And then I saw a sink that also had really gross stains. And I felt like I needed to change these things out. So I ripped it all out. And by ripped it out, I mean this tub was smashed in half and carried out by the plumbers. It weighed like a bajillion pounds and they're like big, strong dudes. And they were struggling very hard to get it out of the house. I know I am so, I am so sad. I am sad all the time when I think about the fact that I destroyed that bathtub, but you don't know what you don't know. And I had no idea about the cult following these bathrooms had. I didn't know that they could be cute if you do it right. I was not even on Instagram at the time. I wasn't even a part of the vintage community, so I had no clue. The one thing that I will say is the thing that was missing to make this a true pink bathroom is it did not have the pink tile surround. I thought it did. I remember when I first saw the house, I was like, oh, I'll keep the original pink tile. But then when I went back to the Zillow listing, I noticed that all it had was a white tile countertop and a white tile backsplash. I really don't like tile countertops. And so that had to go, but also it was just white. So I didn't feel a need to keep it. If it did have pink tile, I was going to keep it. So my number one regret is that I got rid of that cast iron tub. If I could redo this bathroom again eight years later, I would have kept the tub and I would have repaired the wall and then put a tile surround in it. That's what I would do, but I can't go back. So what I ended up doing was just putting in a plain plastic tile surround and I really just I'm not a big fan of tile, it's very expensive. And also this is really easy to clean. And at the time I did not have a ton of money, so it just made perfect sense for me, but I would totally redo it if I could. Then I did have an exhaust fan put in up there, which is a big relief and I really am grateful that I have that. Now, the big question is, do I regret getting rid of my pink toilet? No, I don't regret buying this toilet at all. And the reason why is because that pink toilet used up so much more water than modern toilets. And I got a problem with that. So I try to be as eco-friendly as possible. And that's a big reason why I love vintage stuff. But I do have a problem when like preserving vintage items also means that I'm using more resources. And drinking water is more and more valuable these days. And I don't want to just literally flush that away. So I'm very glad that I got this toilet and I would definitely like to know in the comments what you would have done and if you would have kept the pink toilet. I do understand. I mean, it is a cool thing, but oh, I should show you guys another way that I save money. So in my toilet tank, I keep a brick in here and my dad taught me that he does that with all his toilets in his house like forever and ever. And there's actually a movement behind it. It's for putting bricks in your toilet tank. And the reason why is because uh, Americans, the most amount of water we use in a day is by flushing our toilets. So if you put a brick in your toilet tank, you use up half a gallon of water less per flush each time. So not only does that save water and conserve it, but it also saves you money. So you can put a brick in there or you can also like fill up a glass bottle with water and put that in there or like a plastic bottle filled with water. The only thing that I would have done differently is I would have donated my pink toilet to like a vintage reclaim shop or I would have like put it in my backyard and then I could have like made a planter and it would have been really funny. So that's the only regret I have. Otherwise, the flooring is linoleum. So it used to be this really gross linoleum. It was like beige, but it had yellowed over time and it was cracking. And so I had to get rid of it. And I ended up putting down my own linoleum. And I actually think it looks a lot like tile. That's why I bought it. 
And I am obsessed with linoleum. I think linoleum flooring is like the greatest invention ever because it is insanely cheap. It is instantly waterproof. It is very easy to install. I don't know why it has such a bad rep, but anyway, they have really cute options for it. So I picked this honeycomb style and I love it. And if you can't tell by the other things I said about the tile, uh, I really do not like tile at all. I can't stand scrubbing grout. It really bothers me. Tile is also way more expensive and it is cold on your feet. And who wants that? So if you like tile, that's okay. It's just a personal preference for me. And like I said, I didn't have a lot of money. So buying a sheet of this linoleum was the best thing that I could do. And I also ordered it from a place where I could get this. And then I also got my countertop at the exact same time. And I had the installer put this countertop on, which is for mica. I had them install this. And then they also installed my kitchen countertops as well, all at the same time to save money. My dad helped me install this beadboard here. This was not original to the house at all, so I added it. And then I painted the walls white and then did this a really cute mint color so that it would be a big pop of color in the room. And then I also really wanted a little ledge here. So it's just two pieces of wood here. So this is like a little shelf and then there's a little piece here to make it look like special trim, but it wasn't. And so we painted it and I think it looks really nice. And I really love this ledge to put all my little flea market trinkets. And this is just like a vintage towel that I have. I have a set of them that I put out on display for videos like this. These aren't my actual towels that I use all the time because vintage towels are really small. Why are they so small? I don't know, but I really like modern towels to actually use because they're way bigger. And these are some uh, reusable paper towels that I made myself. I made them years ago. So I made them in like smaller sizes. And then I also have them in way bigger sizes, like a regular sheet of a paper towel. And it's just flannel. And then it has a cut up towel on the back. And they're awesome. I use them all the time and I still use regular paper towels sometimes, but I try to use these as much as I can. And these two mirrors I got at a garage sale. So they were from the same garage sale and they were $25 a piece. And I almost didn't buy them because back then I was so cheap. I was so, so careful with every dollar that I spent. And so $25 per mirror, so 50 bucks. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that but the mirror that was in this room, it was just a really plain rectangle mirror. It was, it left a lot to be desired and I really wanted something special and I'm very glad that I got them. And then I have this ledge here so they could just lean up against it and I think it looks so pretty. It is so hard to film in here because it is so small. So I'm just gonna be filming here in the shower. Anyway, so this vanity is original. This used to be wood and I painted it white and I think it looks a lot better with the flooring that I chose. This is the like the only wood piece in the house that I ended up painting, but I love the vanity. It is huge. It has a ton of storage and it's awesome. And this originally had one pink sink and I was like, uh, this vanity is big enough for two sinks. So why wouldn't I do that if I already have a plumber coming? And so I love having two sinks. It is way better than one. But of course, I did end up getting rid of that pink sink. It did have gross stains on it, and I probably could have gotten it out if I tried. But if I could redo this again today, what I would have done is I would have gone to a vintage reclaim shop, and I actually found a really cool local one. So if you're local to Michigan, I will link them below. Uh, but I would have gone to a reclaim shop, and I would have tried to find two matching pink sinks and then I would have put those in there. I think that would have been really cute, but I am overall quite happy with the two sinks that I have and I think it looks really cute in the space. Here's my little faucets that I picked. I thought they were so cute. They're kind of vintage inspired and I love this little Lazy Susan. I think it's probably for a dining room table. I got it at Goodwill I think like last month and I thought, oh, that would be perfect for bathroom storage. And uh, I normally keep my deodorant and toothpaste in here, so it doesn't normally look this cute. But uh, I thought I could leave the Pons out since Pons is a very old fashioned company. So I do wanna say the next time that you see a person online changing a vintage something or other in a house, please don't put them on blast and just be super rude and be like, you're ruining that because they just might not even know. They might have no clue about the world of vintage bathrooms, vintage kitchens, 
They might be completely ignorant to it, just like I was. If someone would have come to me uh, and said like, hey, did you know how cool pink bathrooms are? They have a cult following. I think I really would have appreciated that and I totally would have redesigned my bathroom, but that didn't happen. And thankfully, nobody got upset with me when I redid my bathroom, but now that I'm posting this online, I'm afraid that people will get upset. So please remember that I am a regular person who has feelings, and so if you could not be super mean, that would be awesome. So let me know in the comments what you would have done differently if you would have done the same thing that I did. I would love to know. Also, if you like anything about my current bathroom, I would love to know what you like. And lastly, if you have any renovation regrets, I would personally love to hear those, and I'm sure other people would like to hear those as well. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Bye! I feel so much better confessing this, so thank you to everyone for listening.